Ooh. What's going on everybody? My name is Mario. I just bumped into the wall. This is a channel all about amusement park type stuff, but mostly coasters. Today in honor of my most liked post on Instagram being a Batman the Ride clone, I decided why not do a video top 10 cloned rides. I should have like cloned my logo done like logo, 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 logo. Try to fit the theme a little bit. I could do it right now real quick. There we go. That looks terrible. That's okay. I want to just start off by saying that just because a ride is cloned doesn't make it bad. There are plenty of good clones. Some of the clones on this list are towards the top of my favorite coasters, kind of near the top. I don't know. They're all really good. Not all of them, actually. Most of them are really good. Just a couple of like rules that I'm going by for this list. The model has to have more than two clones. So like the Raptor clones aren't going to be in here because there's only two of them. Same thing with Mr. Freeze Reverse Blast, even though those two models are absolutely fantastic. They would be without a doubt uh, number one and number two on this list if they were on it. I just think since there's only two of them, I don't really want them to be lumped in the group of all these other clones. That being said slight differences like a slight modification to the layout i'm still going to consider that a clone to start things off i'm going to start with actually a few honorable mentions i already talked about the raptor clones mr freeze reverse blast there's also the intimate impulses i've actually not been on a cloned model of that so that's why i can't really count it uh, i've only been on wicked twister which i'm really not the biggest fan of uh and the flash at six flags discovery kingdom which is if you watched my previous list is a uh, fantastic ride i absolutely love it and then we also have our spinning coasters so mauer and gerslauer I really, really like both of those models. Great fun. Just barely missed the list. Uh, but they could honestly be interchanged with number 10 on this list, which is, and this is going to upset some people, but you know, this is my list. This is not your list. Make your own list. That's fine. But this is mine. Vacoma SLCs. Yeah, I actually kind of like Kong. Uh, I operated it for about three months, I want to say. I had to, got to, depending on how you want to look at it, test ride this uh, almost every day that I operated it. And uh, I did have a little bit of a love-hate with it, but if you get on a good SLC on a good day when it's running smooth in the correct seat, you can have a good ride. I know that's a lot of criteria that have to be met for your ride to be good, but it is possible to have a good ride. Now, if you do happen to get a ride that is on the quote-unquote quote, smoother side of things. It's really fun. It's a nice forceful layout. Me personally, I don't think the over the shoulder restraints are that bad. They're quite soft, honestly. I'm able to ride it with minimal head banging. The only problem I have is just the jerkiness back and forth kind of hurts my back. So one ride is plenty for me, but I do actually enjoy rides on Kong as well as I haven't had much problem with the other SLCs that I've been on. So SLCs actually make this list. I think they're pretty decent. Number nine on this list, another invert of the the smoother variety is going to be Batman the Ride, the model that inspired this video. Not this Batman the Ride, of course, the B&M inverts. Everybody's been on these. They're the same pretty much everywhere you go. I've been on about six of these. My favorite one is actually at my old home park of Six Flags Magic Mountain. That one just happens to be the smoothest and it feels like it runs the fastest. Um, I don't really have any complaints with them other than they can sometimes be almost too forceful and a little on the shorter side, I guess, but they're pretty good. I like them. They're better than SLCs. There you go. All right, now number eight on this list is actually gonna be two models. They're just very similar. They both have more than three clones built, uh, but I've only been on one each, so I'm just gonna kind of lump them together. That being said, number eight is Schwarzkopf Looping Stars slash Looping Arrows. Looping Star, what is it? Silver Arrows and Looping Stars. So the Looping Star that I've been on ironically has silver in the title, and that is Silver Bullet at Frontier City in Oklahoma City. This is actually a really, really enjoyable ride. It has some fun laterals that throw you side to side. Obviously, Schwarzkopf vertical loops are fantastically forceful, and it has this weird triangular airtime hill towards the end that launches you out of your seat for a brief moment. It's nothing too special, but I really enjoy it, and a very similar model is the Silver Arrow, which ironically has another color that is not silver in the title that I've been on, Big Blue, in Croatia at Fun Park Biograd. It's a fun ride. It's very simple. Again, it has less to it, uh, but it does have a more forceful helix at the end. These are are very enjoyable rides. I'm definitely not upset that they are clone, and I honestly look forward to getting on more of them in the future. All right, you guys know what comes after seven. Wait, I mean, you know what comes after eight, seven. Well, it comes before eight, but it, when I'm on a list, when you're counting down, it comes next, okay? Just... 
bear with me. It's been a long day. I'm tired. All right. So number seven is I forget. So I have to look at the list. Number seven, backlot stunt coaster. I've only been on one of these. There are only, I think three. You can correct me if I'm wrong. Maybe four, three, four. Kings Island, Kings Dominion, Canada's Wonderland, I believe are the three parks that have these. But these actually really surprised me with how fun they were. Starting with that launch, that is pretty forceful. It doesn't take you that fast, but it gets you there pretty quickly. Then that helix right after the launch is quite forceful. There are some decent pops of not so bad airtime. And uh, my favorite part of the ride has to be the indoor section where it is pitch black and you have no idea what's going on. I do know that a lot of them don't have the effects working. Only a couple were out when I went to Kings Island, so I was happy about that. This is just a really good family ride and definitely another one that is not an issue to be cloned. All right, next up we have what is on my shirt. We got 40 free spins. Now these are a little more divisive. Um, when they first came out, people were really excited about them and now people are just straight up sick of them. I think they're really fun. I only just rode my first one uh, about a year ago. So I guess I'm just not quite sick of them yet, but they do provide a relatively intense ride experience, I would say, especially with the first drop completely whipping you. Obviously my biggest complaint with these is gonna be the fact that they are way too short, but for the time that you are on the ride, it provides a really good thrill. And I would love to see one of these come up that has the extended layout that I know SNS does have. As of now, I've been on three of these and my favorite one is the one at Fiesta Texas, which is actually the original, uh, just because it's the one that has the most magnet fins that I've been on. Um, so you typically get way more flips on that than you would at Discovery Kingdom or over Texas. But regardless, all three of them are pretty fun. All right, at number five, this is one that is cloned, but is also pretty rare. Number four is gonna be similar as well. This is a Schwarzkopf shuttle loop. Now, I've only been on one of these. I'm pretty sure there's only one operating in North America still. That's gonna be Montezuma's Revenge at Knott's Berry Farm. If you haven't been on this, I'll walk you through the ride experience a little bit. You have a flywheel launch that yanks you out of the station. It's kind of weird. It starts off a little bit slow, so you just kind of are gradually taking off, then all of a sudden it ramps up and starts accelerating at a quicker pace, which is really weird. Super fun. Uh, it's not the most forceful in the world, but it is a little bit different than your typical LIM, LSM, or even hydraulic launch. Obviously, it's not as forceful as that, but it is different. Like I was saying earlier, those Schwarzkopf loops, so forceful, uh, especially if you're sitting in the front or the back, you're going to get completely pinned to the bottom of your seat. Or the top of your seat. You're going to get complete, you're going to get your bottom pinned to the seat, that's for sure. And then you go up a vertical spike, which is relatively uneventful. It's kind of just there to send you back the other way. You get pushed into that forceful loop backwards, which is probably the most forceful backwards loop out there. After that, you'll fly back through the station, go up another spike. And this one is kind of weird because in the back row, you'll actually get some floater airtime and even sometimes ejector airtime going up and coming back down, which you really wouldn't expect from a spike that's at an angle of only about 50 degrees, probably, I would say. But Montezuma is a fantastic ride. I don't know if the other ones that are still operating are as good, uh, but I'd have to imagine they're at least pretty close. And up next, sorry, Cable. Up next, we have a ride type that is almost exactly the same. This is an aero shuttle loop. And there's a couple reasons I like these better. Actually, literally only one, and it is the ejector airtime. You get forwards ejector airtime, backwards ejector airtime, and you get both a couple of times. The loop is not quite as good, but it is also very forceful. And I think overall, this model does just provide a little more thrills because it has a little more variety. It's not quite as smooth as the Schwarzkopf shuttle loops because it is older aero track, but you don't have to worry about bad aero transitions because there's no turns. So isn't that nice? Number three, and uh, this was a little tricky. I could have easily put this below the shuttle loops, but this is gonna be the Skyrocket 2s. I feel like the general consensus is that these are pretty good for clones. I think this model is probably some people's favorite clone, which I can totally understand. The forwards and backwards really provides a nice variety for the ride experience. Going up that first launch, you get a little bit of floater airtime. Backwards, you don't get much. And then forwards, you get skyrocketed, no pun intended, into some ejector airtime if you're sitting in the front floater. If you're in the back with the great laterals with that twist, the hang time on that heartline roll is great. And the airtime and G-forces coming down that last drop are great as well. I've only been one of these. It is, surprise, surprise, also at Discovery Kingdom, Superman Ultimate Flight. I do definitely like the fact that Superman does not have any comfort collars, but if those don't detract from the ride experience, then I feel like all of these are probably great fun. All right, and for number two, we have Spaghetti Bowl L-I-M, L-I-M, S-M? Let me double check. It's L-I-M, right? Spaghetti Bowl L-I-M launch coasters by Premier Rides. Two Premier Rides coasters back to back. These are really, really good models. Fantastic if we are talking about the outdoor ones. Really good if we're 
we're talking about the indoor ones. For those of you that don't know the difference between the indoor ones and the outdoor ones, the indoor ones at the Cedar Fair Parks, they actually have a mid-course break run, whereas Joker's Jinx and Poltergeist at Six Flags Great America, sorry, Six Flags Regular America, and <laughs> Six Flags Fiesta Texas, both don't have a mid course. They have that section of straight track. It just doesn't have any brakes on it, which is awesome. So that second half of the ride hauls, whereas the indoor ones kind of bring you to a little bit of a slow and then you meander through that course until you finally pick up speed at the very end. I also think, and this is from going on an indoor one and an outdoor one, as well as just seeing it in the POVs and off-ride footage, the initial launch is faster on the outdoor ones as well with poltergeists being the fastest. At least that's the way it seems. You guys can check out some POVs for yourself, but for my my experience that one is extremely forceful. Also outdoors, you can see the supports like going over your head and stuff. So it's even like more intimidating, I would say. And the indoor ones, at least the one at Kings Island that I rode, it's not in pitch black. So it really doesn't add to the suspense of the ride. It's just like somewhat dark. Outdoor ones, definitely better than the indoor ones, but both fantastic clones. So editing me is gonna jump in here real quick. Uh, I actually completely forgot about the Superman b and flying clones, uh, which should be number two on this list. Therefore Kong and Vessel LC shouldn't be on here at all, uh, but I forgot about it, so oops. All right, and then number one on this list will be a little bit surprising. I don't even know if it's my number one because it's been about 10 years since I've been on one, and that is Vacoma Flying Dutchmans. Now, I know the spectrum of these goes from really fun to terrible. Uh, I know we just lost one. I did visit Kings Island. I did not get to get on it. We didn't have a ton of time at that park, so unfortunately, I've only been on one of the models, but the one I went on was Batwing at Six Flags America, and like I said, it was a long time ago, but I remember having a blast on this thing. It is a nice change of pace if you are very used to B&M flyers. Now it's not as smooth. I would say overall it's not as good, but it does have a nice variety of flying elements and lying elements. I think doing the vertical loop starting on your back is really unique again, because I'm used to B&M flying coasters. So it is just a weird change of pace to ride that. I, I really do think these models just do a really interesting job of combining flying and lying, as well as the transitions from flying to lying or lying to flying. Let me know what you guys think of those Vacoma Flying Dutchmans because like I said, it's been 10 years since I've been on one. So hadn't been on as many coasters. It's probably affecting my opinion of it a little bit, but until I ride it again, it's going to take that number one spot for me. So that is it for this video. Let me know what you guys think of each model on this list, how many you've been on, what's your favorite, what's your favorite that isn't on this list. But I really think that most of the coasters on this list are really solid rides and I'm definitely not upset that they are cloned at all. Anyways, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like the video if you liked it. And remember, give it two thumbs down if you dislike it, so I know that you really, really didn't like it. Subscribe for more videos like this, and this is the end of the video.